What's going on everyone? So in case you missed it, Apple recently rolled out iOS 14.5, which actually gave us a bunch of cool new features. And so in today's video, instead of going through a bunch of like the endless list of 75 plus or whatever changes, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover the most popular ones and the ones that everybody should know to really allow you to get the most out of this device. So let's go ahead and get started with number one. If you have an iPhone equipped with Face ID, there is now Mask ID. I've been using this for quite some time now because that was a part of the developer beta and this only works if you have an Apple Watch paired to your iPhone. This is an awesome substitute for those that don't have Touch ID, like the fingerprint. And with Face ID, you know how difficult it was to unlock your device while wearing your mask. This is a nifty walk around. So if you don't know how to enable this, you all you gotta do is simply just go into your settings, scroll down to Face ID and passcode, go ahead and enter your code, scroll down to where you see unlock with Apple Watch and just hit turn on, follow the on-screen instructions. And in case your Apple Watch that you have paired to your device is grayed out like this, just make sure your Apple Watch is on the latest update. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put on a face mask. Here's my hideous face with a face mask. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock my device. It unlocked, I get notified on my wrist. And if this was a false unlocked, I could always just tap lock iPhone and it will immediately lock my iPhone in case my friend or somebody else quickly gets it. It will give me a haptic feedback on my watch, letting me know that my Apple Watch has been unlocked. I could manually just lock it right here on my wrist, so my phone is locked once more. And if you notice, it requires passcode to re-enable Face ID. So that's one of the pros and cons about using this Face ID feature, is that as soon as you have this enabled, if somebody's nearby, whoever has access to your phone that's nearby to you can unlock it. Now the map application, if we go ahead and launch this, take it to the Pacific Ocean, because uh, you know, people are stalkers. There's a new feature, there's a new ways map feature that allows you to report incidents that happen on a road, like a crash, a speed trap, and et cetera. And to file a report with navigation, just tap the eye icon on the top, tap report an issue, and right here is where you see those, those new options. So you could do like an accident, hazard, or speed trap. And in addition to that, if you're using Apple CarPlay, you have access to the same feature as well by tapping this little eye icon right here. And here are those options that you can quickly report while you're driving. And as an added bonus, a new thing they added on CarPlay that I just noticed is the little green icon is right here, letting you know that your phone is, camera is enabled. Also, Siri got some new features as well. You can verbally request or tell Siri to report an accident or a speed trap if you use Siri as well. I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because I don't want to do a false mark. You can request Siri to call emergency SOS. So instead of, like originally you just held these two buttons for the SOS, now you can actually verbally just tell Siri to call emergency contacts. Ah, cancel. Okay, cool, I didn't do it. But yeah, you can verbally do that. Other cool things, there's third party support now for streaming songs. So let's say for example, play Linkin Park songs. Siri will now give you the option to choose from the music streaming services that you have installed on your smartphone. So we could always select YouTube Music and that would be the preferred third party applications that we're gonna be starting to use to make music selections. So now there's support for third party. And another cool innovation for Siri is now you have two additional voices to choose from. So if you scroll down to Siri and search, Siri's voice, we now have these two no new voices. And it definitely sounds a lot more natural. Voice 2 is my personal preference now. Now, if you do a lot of gaming on your iPhone, you'll be happy to know that the next-gen console controllers are now fully supported to be used on your iPhone or even iPad on the latest firmware update. So in case you don't know how to pair up your device, simply just go into your settings. I'm just gonna go a quick overview. Go into Bluetooth, scroll down to where it says other devices. So to pair the PlayStation controller, simply just hold down the PlayStation icon and this share icon and keep holding it until the LED light begin rapidly flashing like so. This is now in discover mode and you're gonna go ahead and see it right here. You may have to uh, reset the Bluetooth app a couple times by going back but it should, should pop up right here. Tap on it and it connects. And once it connects if you want to turn it off you no longer want to use it to reserve its battery. Just simply hold on the PlayStation button for a couple of seconds until the LED lights turn off. For the Xbox it's very similar. Hold down the Xbox button, but instead of the share button, you hit the sync button 
and just keep holding this, these two buttons down until the Xbox logo begins rapidly flashing like so. And you'll be able to see it right here in the Bluetooth devices. Tap on it, it will connect. And then once it's connected, if you wanna turn it off, just hold down the Xbox button for a couple of seconds until the LED fully turns off. Now, if you're a subscriber to Apple Music, the application got a small overhaul, some very useful innovations. One of which is whenever you're playing a song, let me lower this. If you tap, tap the lyrics icon right here, if you tap and hold on the lyrics, you can select the lyrics that you like, and then you can share it with your contact list or social media, and it'll generate like a story that you're seeing right here. And you can share this like on your Instagram story or something like that. This is a new feature. In addition to that, whenever you're listening to a playlist, you now have this swipe in addition to that, whenever you're playing like a playlist, you now have a swipe right option for you can move it to the next track or play last. Now for the iPhone 12s that support 5G, 5G was reportedly improved on the iPhone 12 Pros. So it's more energy efficient on the device if you're connected to 5G. And now, and if your device is using an eSIM and a physical SIM, both now support 5G. Another cool change that's worth noting is if you have a MagSafe device and you quickly put your device into low power mode, you now get this yellow animation instead of the standard green. Then if you use the reminder app, don't judge me, these are all expired dates I know. I always forget to clear them out. But if you tap the little top corner right here, you now have the ability to print. And if you look at the preview, it's basically gonna be a paper version of that where you can actually physically like mark it with a pen or a pencil. The translation app by Apple also got a new update as well. When translating, if you long press on the play icon, you can actually slow it down or accelerate it. And of course, Apple likes to keep their privacy transparent. Now we have a new additional privacy feature where if you go into your settings and go into privacy, you can now see the applications that track you at all times and you could disable them like right here. So they can't really stalk you anymore and sell your data for them to earn ad revenue off of you. And then also you got new emojis, but one of them actually have a unique feature like this one right here. You can actually change skin tone of these two lovebirds. So by going into your emojis, let me show you how that works. Cause it is kind of confusing at first. So here's our two lovebirds. If you long press, you have these options. So we could change the skin tone of the female and then the skin tone of the male. Just like that. And then tap on it, it'll paste right there. And then you also got Charlie. Shout out to Critical. The official podcast application finally got a new look, a new overhaul. It's super modernized. It matches the theme of the music application by Apple if you're a subscriber. So you can still listen to your podcast in addition to that. And then you also have the swipe left feature now too. All right. And then if you use AirPod Max, AirPods 2 or AirPods Pro, the automatic switch feature to switch between those earbud devices uh, has been resolved, supposedly. So if you were like me who was previously complaining about the app switcher not constantly working properly, uh, supposedly this got resolved, but we'll be the judge of that in the long term. Other than that, folks, that's basically all the important nitty gritty stuff and the new settings to adjust for the latest update of iOS 14.5. For more Apple videos, feel free to watch that video over there. And then that video over there, this is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching, take care. And I'm just a hand and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.